Welcome back to the Woodcrafter. We've got a new tool in the workshop, the Laguna 1632 drum sander. Starting a mini series, unboxing it, setting it up, calibrating it, putting it through its paces. So that sounds good to you. Stick around. Now a drum sander is one of those things that I never actually thought I wanted or needed. If you remember some time ago, I bought a hand belt sander and I was making do with that in my craft projects. One of my friends got in touch with me, Paul over at TaylorMade, brilliant maker of some really good craft projects and I'll leave a link to his Etsy site here. So go and check him out and have a look. Hey Andy, I've just got hold of a drum sander, the same model as this one. And he said it's a game changer for me. It's a game changer. I'm getting better results, I'm getting better results quicker than I've ever done before, and I can do things I've not been able to do before because of the capacity of the machine. He said it's fantastic. Um, week on week on week, he keeps telling me how great this machine is. When I make an investment decision to bring a new tool into the business, it's got to meet one of three criteria for me. Does this allow me to do something I can do today to a higher quality? Does this allow me to do something I do today faster so I can get productivity gains? Does this allow me to do something I can't do today? So when Paul got in touch, somebody I trust quite a lot and said, hey, similar sort of business, it's great, had to have a look at it. So I did some research, did some investigation, and this drum sander, the Laguna 1632, appears to be the best in the marketplace. As always, I want to give a shout out to the people I bought it from. I'm not affiliated to Laguna and I'm not affiliated to this company. I got this from a company called Biven Machinery Tooling, bivenmachinerysales.co.uk. I'll leave a link here. The reason I'm giving these a shout out is because of the customer service. Like most things in lockdown and like most things post Brexit, we have a back order problem. Everything I seem to buy, whether it's material or tools, is on back order and it takes a while to come through. I placed this order with Bivin Machinery and the day after, a human, not an email, not an automated thing, a human rings me up. He said, hey, you placed this order on the website yesterday and I just want to let you know that that's currently on back order. This is when we're expecting the delivery to come in. It will be with us on this date. We'll do the initial checks that we do. We'll repackage and we'll send it out to you and it will be with you on this date. Do you still want to go ahead with the order? Now, other people I've bought from on back order, they don't get in touch. There's an email coming through, this is on back order, keep track of it on the website. But to have a human interaction like that, I thought was really, really, really cool. And from Biven Tools, they do two versions of this. It's the same machine, they do package versions of it. Just to buy the standard machine, it's gonna cost you 1,348 pound and 99 pence delivered to your door. Comes on a pallet, you can see how it arrived in my workshop here. The second version is a package deal, and that will set you back £1,449, but that comes with some additional sanding discs and the in-feed and the out-feed extension tables, which to me, I think is a bargain. So I've gone for the package deal. So a huge shout out to that company. It was actually supposed to be coming in at the end of May, the beginning of June. So imagine my surprise stood here in April when they ran me back and say, hey, hey, Mr. Woodgrafter, your products are in stock we would like to get shipped out to you. And I said, oh great, what sort of dates have you got available? We can bring it tomorrow. Doesn't get better than that. The guy arrived, he brought it straight into my workshop, on the pallet, put it where I wanted it to be, said goodbye, and off he went, transaction complete. So great company, really, really good. They're based in Blackpool in the UK, which is probably only about an hour away from where I live. So lockdown, I'm gonna go down and say hello to these guys and see what's going on there. But yeah, nice company, have a look at those. Right, today I want to unbox this thing and get it set up. So we'll put the extension tables on one side, we'll unpack the big exciting white box and see what we've got. So, opening the box, everything is nicely packed in this polystyrene stuff. Not a lover of polystyrene, it's not very eco-friendly, but it does protect your tools. First thing I've got is a bag of bits. Looks like spanners, knobs, nuts, bolts, some sort of interesting hook type of device. We'll have a look at that shortly. It's got the all important instructions, so now's probably a good time to have a look at the capacity of this machine. The maximum width of board I can create with two passes, pass one, turn the board round, pass two, is 812.8 millimetres. The minimum length of the board, how long the board is going in is 57 millimeters. Crikey, that's small. 
So that's a small, that, that's the shortest board that it would likely pick up on. Wow. So this prompts us to do some fine work as well, I think. The maximum thickness is 76 millimetres. Now, 76 millimetres is really pretty good. That's the thickness of the board that it will take, 76 millimetres. The minimum thickness is 0.8 millimetres. The speed of that drum is 1,450 revs per minute. It's got a dust port on top that's 100 millimetres, which is great. Perfect size for my dust extraction system. The conveyor belt speed will come from 0 to 3 meters per minute wow that seems pretty impressive we'll look at that the drive motor is one and a half horsepower power requirements is 230 volts uh, one phase and the overall shipping weight is 117 kilograms so not stupid heavy but heavy enough and back into our exciting white box also got the drum abrasive kit for the 1632. Now this has come with a number of different sandpapers, 36, 80, 80 and 120 grit. And then hiding down inside the polystyrene appears to be the machine itself. Um, what I think I'll do is cut the box off. And this white box is pretty heavy. And I'm assuming that that white box is actually the stand. I'm, this is why I don't like polystyrene. I'm covered in polystyrene bits now. There's also a sanding belt cleaning stick hiding away inside here. This is the right hand carton. There's nothing packaged in the right hand carton. So it's purely in that left hand carton you're looking for the stand. And I think that is pretty much it. Now the stand does actually come with the machine, it's not an optional extra, which is nice to see, but then again, at those sort of prices, you'd want to, uh, you'd be disappointed if you had to run by a stand. And it's pretty standard fodder inside here, more polystyrene, bag of bolts, and some hardware and brackets. And it's one of those pressed steel type assemblies. It's quite thick pressed steel actually, so it's quite heavy, so it should be pretty stable, which is what we want. Now there's no instructions in the box, so that suggests that the instructions to build this are actually in here. Yeah, and they start on page number eight. So it looks pretty easy. We start by making two end assemblies and then putting the, the the top in and then we put the braces on. And that's it. All square, all beautiful. It's a sign of quality, you know, because I didn't line these top holes up thinking about that. I didn't even check them, but look, they've come out pretty much bang on, which is obviously where the, the machine sits, so that's nice. Now, this is obviously pressed steel, but there's no sharp edges. It's well finished. It's all got this nice black um, powder coating on it. Yeah, and that's, and that's going to be good. I like that. Right. Ooh, crikey. Turn it back on its top. Now, you can get an optional caster kit for this, but for some reason I couldn't find the Laguna caster kit anywhere inside the UK. No idea why, no idea why. Maybe me just didn't look hard enough. But I did buy a set of casters from Amazon. I think each of these wheels takes about 50 kilogram, and the overall weight of this is about 88, so I'm in good shape. 200 capacity on here, 88 on the frame in the machine. Got one with a 10 millimeter spindle, so it should fit in these holes okay. Two of these are braked and the other two are loose, so this should just be a matter. Actually, I'll make use of the washers that came with this as well. I've got the type with a brake that breaks the wheel and also breaks the spindle. So that should be good. Now, <laughs> one second. Ooh, 
there is quite a lot of weight in that, so I do recommend that you get a friend to help, but it is manageable. It's just about manageable to get to this phase. And now in third, I can just manhandle it into position. Now in this other bag, the one with the red spanner thing inside it, we have a spanner, we have a knob, we have a Supermax TUF take up fastening tool and instructions. And we have some nuts and bolts and washers, a couple of Allen keys. Now it's these bolts and washers that we need to fit this to the stand. Now interestingly, when I was watching YouTube videos, in earlier versions of this, it came packed on its own crate inside the box, and all that plastic material that you saw on mine wasn't actually there, it was sort of held inside the crate. And in some ways, I think that might have been more environmentally friendly. It's like the plastic bag on it, but I didn't notice all that polystyrene that we got on this particular one. I'm not sure that's an improvement or not, depends how environmentally um, tuned in you are. But it should be no harder than putting the bolts underneath, lining it up and tightening it down. Now the next job is to set up the digital gauge here. Now remember when I said it came with a second owner's manual and it seems to be all about the digital gauge? That's because it's a different design gauge than the one that's discussed in the manual. Now on page 18, page 10 here, sorry, of the manual, it starts to talk about a digital gauge that you slide out and put some batteries that are supplied into it and plug it in that used to be mounted here on the machine. Now what's happened here, the design's changed. This has now got a piece of foam inside there and it's got a fitted digital gauge here. It's no longer removable and it's in this unit and it looks like it's taking its measurement from the actual calibration stick. So there's probably a roller inside there that's doing the magic for us. But this has now got some storage in and we had a couple of Allen keys provided with a kit. No idea what they're for, but hey, look at that. They're obviously for something in use because there's storage for them. So we'll drop our Allen keys into there. So now we need to look at this gauge. So we'll use the second manual that came with the kit. And what it's saying is there's three types of calibration. There's calibration one, and that's showing the final thickness of the stock. Calibration number two is showing how much material you're taking off in each pass. And then calibration number three is telling you both. So it's telling you the fine, so it's calibrated for the final thickness of the stock, but you can still see how much is coming off in each pass. So we'll come back to calibration of this because I'm not doing calibration in this video. We'll do that as part of the next video. This is all about the setup. So all I want to do now is to drop some batteries in. Doesn't come with batteries. Um, not sure what we need. Little cover comes off. And they look like triple A's. Just checking my gauge, and yes, that's working. That's fine. Good. Next job is just to put on the knob. It just simply screws in here. No harder than that. On the back here, we've got a separate motor for the conveyor belt, and that motor's got a lead on it. And the next step in our instructions is to plug that lead into the device itself. Now mine already came plugged in, but it's no harder than this socket here. It is pointing out that this socket is only to supply power to our motor. Don't put anything else into that socket. Obviously it's got a, a ampage rating inside there. And it's got what we would call in the UK, a sort of male kettle lead. So that just plugs into there, no dramas. And then it tells you to check your power supply. And as you can see, we've got a UK three pin, 13 amp plug socket. So that's great. It'll work off our standard socket, but don't plug it in just yet. So that's pretty much it. That's the setup of the machine done. I mean, that was stupidly easy. It probably took me, including talking to the camera, probably about 35, 40 minutes to get the thing, to get the stand built, to get the wheels on, to get it here, to get the batteries in the device and get the thing plugged in. So not the worst setup I've ever had in my life. So before we get to the calibration, we'll just look at some of the features. What you've got here is a speed control 
for the conveyor belt. It's infinitely variable. It comes from zero up to 100, and obviously that just speeds up the, uh, the belt. And that's the thing that feeds the material into the drum. We've obviously got the digital gauge here, and we know we can ca calibrate that in one of three ways. I think for me, I'm going to calibrate it to the final thickness of the stock. That's how I'd use it, but we'd look at that next time. You've got the classic adjustment handle here, winding the handle lowers the head. You can see the head here moving up and you can see the head here moving down. The trick that this has got up its sleeve that everybody raves about is this handle here. This is the quick adjust handle. You simply flick this black lever on the top that disengages this and now you can just move this up to its maximum cutting capacity or you can bring it back down again to rest on your stock to start the job, which is quite good. While I'm here, there's a packing disc. I'm just gonna take out that packing disc. And then once you've got this resting on your stock, you can flick the handle and now you can just fine adjust that down to whatever you want the machine to do. 100 millimeter dust port here on the top. So obviously once you've got your dust extractor to this, it draws air in underneath the drum around the sanding drum itself and through this hole. And what they've done, they've just put some angled blades inside there, I'm not sure if you can see them or not. And that just turns this into a cyclone. So you'll have a cyclone effect going on inside here. And allegedly, allegedly, that gives you better dust extraction than just a standard opening. So it's quite, I'm quite interested to see how well that works. Now this little red catch that I just done did to take this off isn't mentioned in the manual. But obviously it's just a safety catch, so with that in place, you can't open the drum. Which I guess is good, and you just pivot it out of the way, and you can then open the drum. Here you can see the drum itself. It does come with some sanding material on this already. Probably feels like an 80 grit or so. Sanding paper's held in place, couple of clips here, spring clips, you just clip this off and that pulls out and you can unwind it. We'll look at changing the sandpaper on the next video and that's the overall drum. So there's not an awful lot more to say and hopefully that's a close up look of that turbine that I was talking about with that in place, you can't then open the drum. Here's a close up now of that digital gauge. You can see that's fixed into position. So it used to be mounted here. So when you look around YouTube, you'll see that it used to slide in here, but now I've got this little storage space for these Allen keys, whatever they're for. I'm sure we'll find out as we get into calibration. You can see the variable speed control here for the belt. And you've got your on button and your off button. And like most machines these days, that's an electromagnetic switch. So if you lose power and then the power comes back on, it doesn't spring into action. Um, so that's pretty cool. Close up here of the control mechanisms. So you've got the black lever here that allows you to micro adjust. Flick that round that allows you to, oops, a daisy. Macro adjust. So I think that's it for today. We've put the thing together, it didn't take long at all. No dramas, super easy. It's great and stable on the stand. Those wheels are well worth the um, about 12 pound investment that they cost me, uh, works really well. Next video, I want to calibrate it. I want to make sure that the belt is parallel to the sanding drum, otherwise you're gonna get skew with sanding. So we'll calibrate this on the next video. We'll also drop on the in-feed and the out-feed plates that came as part of the optional kit, and we get those calibrated, get those level. We'll then calibrate the digital gauge for zero so we know what we're doing, and then we're gonna put it through its paces in anger on a project I'm building. So, hope you're finding this useful. I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter.